Could you clarify one point for me? 50 times uh, less platform uh, idle power. Is that the most Town platform or the most Town platform plus radios, USB components, whatever, or the product? So when I say platform, this is the platform. Right, that's right. what I know So it's platform. got everything in it, right? Yeah. LCD, radios, chips, memory, the whole bit. So right. it's, it's even more significant than I thought. Right? That's so good. 50x reduction is uh, relative to the Menlo platform. Right. Yes, uh, yes. So yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I've done the maths on that already. Yes. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> Um, Moblin 2 for um, for Morstown. So obviously Wind River are working on it. Canonical, do you have any other uh, ISVs working on it? Same, same partners, OSVs, that we've had, which is uh, uh, Asianux, uh -huh. uh, okay. yeah. Ubuntu, which is Canonical, yeah. right, and Wind River. Right. Those are the three main partners right, um, as a go-to-market on Moblin 2. Um, and uh, that's no different than what we had last year. Um, I spoke to Pankaj about this last night, but um, as we move forward, the ARM-based platforms are, are obviously getting very close to what Morstown is. I mean, you're moving in that way, the ARM platforms are moving up across there. What is the um, key advantage now for uh, smartphones as we move forward uh, based on Intel as opposed to ARM? A fundamental key advantage is going to be performance and compatibility. I don't think our competition will be able to touch us on performance, right? and I don't think they're going to be able to touch us on compatibility. Right? So those are the two fundamental advantages, and those are pillars of what we want to, I mean, from get-go, those are design principles for us, right? that we will maintain that. Right? And I've said this for three years running. Right? Mm -hmm. We want to maintain performance leadership, we want to maintain compatibility, and while doing that, drive the power down. That's, that's our design principle. Right? Mm -hmm. Can I jump in here for a second? Yeah. What about in terms of endurance? I mean, and, and Intel being able to keep up in terms of, of battery life and, and endurance? That's driven by the lower power, right? Yeah. So endurance is as we get idle power down, right? That drives battery life, battery life, right? Mm -hmm. And as we as we drive overall power reduction down, right? Uh, it's a bit of a tutorial. There are three levels of power that are mm -hmm. important. TDP, which is max. Power, right, when mm -hmm. every transistor is turned on. Idle power, which right. is when every transistor is turned off, and the only thing that it's doing is leakage, right? And what's in the middle is average power, which is really the area under the curve. How much time am I spending in max power, and how much time am I spending in idle power, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what we do is we try to reduce TDP as much as possible, right? And we try to reduce idle power as much as possible, and we try to deliver as much performance as possible, mm -hmm. right? So the the impact of that is uh, if we maintain the performance advantage, which we do, right, we can actually get the job done really quickly and go to sleep, right? Um, right. And because we do Huggy. that, right, because it's the area under the curve, right, average mm -hmm. power actually gets better, right? Mm -hmm. So your endurance is actually better, right? So. But there's, within that answer, there's yeah. myriads of optimizations that you have to do at the platform level to be able to extract also depending answer. on the task, so like we were talking about That's performance, which yeah. HD video and versus uh, uh, something as basic as you know, typing a message or something. Else. What are the differences? Are you going to represent for Can I jump in? Um, yeah, Frank. Yeah, please. Frank Gruber, I'm somewhat Frank, I'm one of the Intel insiders. Okay. Um, I, my question is actually. Um, more coming from like a consumer perspective. I've got a, an iPhone that I use a lot. Um, with all the different, you, you're seeing a convergence, like you're saying, with ARM and uh, you know these your, your platforms as well, kind of coming together. I'm wondering, you, you hadn't mentioned Apple once. <laughs> they're coming out next week. You know, with their, with they're gonna have some announcements. I'm wondering if there's anything that you can do. Like, is there anything that Intel's working on with Apple specifically that you, you should ask about? Apple? <laughs> we don't talk about customers in general. Okay. We talk about OEMs partners because we use them as a go-to-market vehicle. Right. But in general, we don't talk about our customers, what they're doing with our stuff. But you know, you should feel free to be talking to those them and find out what they're doing with us. I'm sure the answer will be so much better. Than yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, cause I'm, it's almost. I mean, they're to the point where, with the things you're announcing, you've got MediaPhone now. Uh, there's other, you know, devices in the works. It's 
to the point where this iPhone isn't up to par anymore. So I'm assuming that they're going to need to push something out that's competitive with the stuff that your guys are doing. So I'm sure they're doing something. Yeah. Okay. Will be wonderful. Okay. My turn. I'm take a K from Take a K Mobile, and uh, the main reason for you're talking about Edel uh, power drop down 50 times more than an earlier platform is because you're really aiming on a smartphone market or smartphone type of market where you actually keep your devices on all the time, right? Uh, that's part of it. The okay. other part of it is getting the idle power done actually helps with battery life. Uh, and one of our goals is to improve the battery life of the mobile and the device substantially. So it's both. Okay. Uh, do you still see that uh, the uh, upcoming MIDs really are more like uh, media and uh, and connectivity devices and not as much as uh, handheld computers uh, like they have been in the past and right now? Uh, I think they're both. Right? Um, I, I think it's going to get indistinguishable in terms of uh, what is a media device and what is a computer. And the, uh, it already is indistinguishable in several, several instances, right? Uh, so I really think um, it's both. Okay. Thank you. Um, question about the video hardware. Uh, there's uh, hardware video support. Uh, is it encoding or just decoding? Sorry, encoding and decoding or just decoding? So in, in Menlo, we only had decode, yep. right? In Morristown, we support both decode and encode. And encode, right? Yeah. Um, and can you say anything about the performance that you're in for? Um, it's uh, uh, 1080p decode. 720p encode. Uh, surprised we didn't hear that in the keynote. That would be a good. A lot of people, um, certainly from your people, were interested in that one. Could I ask something? Uh, I'm Shabax uh, from techvideoblog.com. Uh, I have a question about the decon. Do you know the decon process that the old PC has where you can turn off the main processor when you don't need it? For example, if you read an ebook or if you just have a page, blank, uh, just a page, and you're not moving the mouse. Are you, uh, do you have something like that already? Are you planning to do something where, where you can like save power and just turning the processor up when you don't need it? Well, that's effectively what we showed in the power, uh, in the power demo. Right? We aggressively manage uh, all of the various function, uh, functional components um, on, on our system, and we turn things off that aren't needed. Right? So, so there's very few milliseconds going on, like it, it's just instant, just as soon as you move the mouse, it comes back, the, the processor? I'm not giving you the specs on how quick, yeah. etc. You'll have to wait for that when we actually launch more stuff. I mean, today was an interim update um, on the way to launch. All right. I have a couple more comments. Sorry. Um, CPU processing power clock for clock Morstown to Menlo is increasing on Morstown. Not right. giving that detail. Um, most, uh, no, actually, I'll answer the question. I was going to ask about the Morristown Menlo overlap. Um, how deep is that? So, how high up the chain can, can Morristown go? Mm -hmm. uh, performance and yeah, spe segmentation. Can we see? T or will we see a two gigahertz uh, atom density? Too, too, too early for me to comment on that. Okay. You, you have a two gigahertz atom today on yeah, the, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, shipping that effectively. Yeah. Is it exactly the same core on most time? Have you redesigned the core? The we, core. We, it, it is the same architecture. Yeah. Right? We have done some power optimizations to it, right. Right? Uh, but effectively, uh, no, it's so the same architecture. Okay. It's a 45 nanometer core. Right. That works. Yeah, Medfield was 32, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Question here. Uh, do you allow for, for cheap laptops with bigger screens than 10 inch? Like uh, within, when you license the Intel Atom, is there like a, a limit of how much the screen must be? Or is it only Microsoft saying something about that? I actually don't know the answer to that. You don't know? I'm not involved in that part of the... Because there was some, some blogs talking about there was a limit. If you want Intel, I mean, if you want to license at a special price, you need a limit in screen size? Um, like probably not the expert to talk about that. I, I can tell you that consumers tend to look associate screen size with performance, right? And Atom clearly is not designed to give you a mainstream desktop or a mainstream notebook experience, right? 
Uh, so it's likely to disappoint if uh, people are using a greater than 10 inch screen uh, with Atom. Uh, that I can tell you, right? Because right. it ne was never designed for that. We try to live in a two water pillow envelope. Actually, that brings down to the question, uh, do, are we going to see more style-based uh, like mini laptops or, or such, or do you really, right now we have a Atom N series on those mainly, but there is still a, a mid CPU Z series on, on some, so is it just a, cu a customer to choose or, or are you? We, we, we've designed more style to really go into the pocketable devices, right? It's, so it's not really designed uh, to go into sort of a netbook configuration, right? Um, but you know, there's a category being talked about by some of our competitors called smartbooks, which they're trying to uh, carve out something that's an offshoot of netbooks, right? I can tell you that if you're going to build a smartbook, uh, Morstan will deliver one hell of a better smartbook than anything else our competition can put in it, right? So, will it go into that? Yeah, so, so like you said, they're trying, and so you're actually now showing the way, so actually we will see those, if those devices will sell. Um, we, we, build, we try to build great technology, and we let our customers innovate around our technology, right, in ways that are meaningful. What so, is, go on, Charles. So, w w will we see $100 laptops running Intel processors? Like, or when, when is, what is the minimum price? Is there a minimum price, or is it just? You should ask people to build laptops. Build that, yeah. <laughs> I'm a component guy. <laughs> okay. Just wondering. If there's like, a, because they're, they're actually marketing uh, on the Snapdragon, they're saying it's $99, but are they like lying? Is it because it's subsidized or? Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. You should ask them that. Right. <laughs> I forgot the question. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know so much as a question. I mean, you mentioned voice in the presentation and that you'd be demoing it. There weren't any demos in the. I thought there were voice demos. There. No. Did you see the voice? So could we do that now? I don't have any uh. any of those here, um, but there was supposed to be demoing voice on oh, yeah? the Quanta platform. So maybe they didn't demo it, mm. but they were supposed to be doing it. That's why okay. we didn't do it on stage because. Yeah, no, we wanted to see. Okay. Okay. I assure One you, day. they can make. Uh, okay. <laughs> they can make. <laughs> When's uh, when do we expect the next update um, idea or? Um, IDF is probably a reasonable time, but you know we'll probably wait till um, a point in time which makes sense, right? Uh, a reasonable amount of customer momentum and technology readiness, etc. The whole bit, right? So I'd rather not pre-commit a date. Right? Okay, but uh, the designers and developers are looking for more detailed information on Morstown. Should be looking to go to IDF. Right? Designers already have people designing with Morstown have oodles of information. Right. Yeah. We've been sampling. Uh, more yeah, yeah, for yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. So designers were, so people were designing had everything they need to get going. Right. So there's not really much that they're waiting. Okay. Fine. Uh, that would be all my questions. Well, what do you guys think? Oh, I know. That was a good question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? No, no, it just came back to me. So, what do you call these devices? Um, media phones was a keyword used by uh, Doug Fisher, I think, in the mobile. Okay. Um, what are you going to call these? Smartphones is a very well defined uh, mm -hmm. keyword. You can't call them mids because they're a little bit more than mids. Um, we'll, probably, we'll probably stick with the term mids and yeah. let customers call their end product, right? right? Whatever they feel comfortable positioning it as, right? Yeah. Um, we, we chose the name mids as a category, right? Um, which is actually an extremely descriptive name, mobile internet device. Yeah. Probably one of the more logical descriptors that you can find. Um, I mean, a laptop is not exactly a logical descriptor. Yeah. Neither is notebook, neither is smartphone. It's anything but smart, right? Mm -hmm. um, but this one actually is a very logical descriptor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but it, it's, a, it's also a catch-all because of that. It catches a number of things underneath it, right? It does catch, for example, the Panasonic rugged mm -hmm. Windows device, right? Yeah. It captures UMPC, it captures yeah, gaming sure. devices, yeah, yeah. captures smartphones as well, right? Yeah. So we'll let our OEMs position the products the way they yeah. think they'll position, they want to position it. Okay, right? so you have nothing in your marketing going forward that's going to... I was just thinking about the, the voice enable aspect of it. Uh, mids, 
based on the feedback I get on my board. Uh, it's not a, a well established term, it's got the, uh, maybe the uh, traction they might have got. And, and we're seeing much, much nicer, slicker devices that we really could fit into our everyday lives rather than into particular parts of our lives. I'm just yeah. thinking it would be nice to have a. Okay. I mean, we, we've yeah. largely been using MIDS as a term, as an umbrella term, yeah, right? Yeah. And, there, and, there, and there are multiple devices that fit underneath yeah. that. Right? You know, we, we talk about personal entertainment players and personal yeah. gaming players um, as potentially something that's underneath them. That is a MID as well, yeah. right? Um, ultimately, if somebody builds a MID that is a personal gaming player, they'll probably call it a personal gaming player, right? Yes. Um, yeah, and, yeah. and not a MID. That's okay by us, mm -hmm. right? We're not hung up on that name. Customer should be able to position it as mm -hmm. they see fit, right? Okay. And smartphone as a category, that name is well established today, but didn't exist five years ago. That's right? a horrible <laughs> category name, that one. <laughs> um, um, hey, Windows support. Windows support. So um, uh, we didn't get really what we wanted. The users who would want to use the MIDs as uh, uh, real computers with desktop systems. So, is the Morstown, are you developing drivers for that uh, uh, same time for Linux uh, based systems and uh, Windows? There will be a variation of Morstown that will run Windows. Right? Okay. Um, the, the, uh, but the primary thrust, obviously, on Morstown and what we talked about today yeah. was around the mobile and the Android environment. Okay. Because uh, that's where you get the power reduction yeah. that we talked about. Yeah. Right? When you run it in a Windows mode, right? Or use it in that configuration, yeah. you won't see the same kind of power level. Okay, so that's the point. So uh, on the first devices we expect to see might be really aimed for that and uh, with the Linux uh, uh, core or Android core, uh, mainly more uh, as, a, as, a, as a closer to phone than closer to like handheld UMPCs we, we used to have. So you might not actually, actually be able to install Windows on that system. Uh, that's a fair count. Okay. So, so Intel is part of the Android Alliance, of the Open Handset Alliance. Yes, we are. Yeah, and uh, what I would wanted to ask is, do you support uh, connected standby? So, for example, if you get a ping like an IM or email, it the the mid or the it will turn on. Yes. It will ring. Yes. And that's something that's new, right? That's correct. Okay. So that's gonna work. <laughs>